Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Jolly Bananas presentation of New Super Mario Bros. U. Here we'll be completing the game, uh, not 100%, we're gonna ignore the star coins, not get every single one of the alternate paths, but if I can remember where it is without overthinking it, we will be taking it. Uh, we're gonna start off at the beginning here, I will be playing this with the Wii U Pro Controller. Uh, it wasn't always supported for this game type, which actually caused a lot of controversy over Nintendo's advertising. And since the release of the DLC, New Super Luigi U, it is now supported. Some of the main differences here is that it's no longer a, a motion requirement to do the spin jump, because it is now the right bumper rather than shaking your controller like you would on the Wiimote or the gamepad. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, it's pretty much standard Mario game. Bowser takes over Peach's castle. It's him and his Koopalings, just like in Super Mario World. Uh, we're seeing the new Acorn Power up here. And the Baby Yoshis, which will come into play later. Those things are godsends. Alright, but four playable characters in the multiplayer. Mario, Luigi, and two Toads. Uh, with the DLC, you also get Nabbit, who pretty much can't die. Uh, so, the level designs are pretty much exactly the same as they were in Super Mario World. You've got one big overworld, individual biomes, like themed environments. You've got a, a mini dungeon, and then the area castle. Right here we have Lemmy's castle that we'll be tackling first. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, my Mario knowledge isn't extremely vast. This is my first Let's Play. I didn't put a whole lot of effort into researching it. I really just wanted to get in and play. So let's give this a whirl. Alright, here we are with the Acorn Power-Up, which basically turns you into a flying squirrel. And the way that this is going to work is you just run and you hit the right bumper or shake the Wiimote. If you are a uh, Mini Mario, Little Mario, uh, whatever you want to call it, if you hit a checkpoint, it will turn you into Big Slash Normal Mario. The game is pretty forgiving in terms of extra lives, so you do not really need to collect any of these coins. There we are, the first level done. The reason I decided to do this game as my first Let's Play is mainly because I believe that the Wii U is a very underrated system. The game library isn't exceptional right now, but it is a Nintendo product, and their first party titles, first party titles, are always fantastic. A lot of think that a lot of people think that this is just a cheap clone of the new Super Mario Brothers for the Wii, but I beg to differ. There's there's a lot of unique changes in here. Uh, this is introducing the, let me think about this for a second, the plane shifting, where the environment will move around you. You could really compare it to something like Super Mario Galaxy. Like I said, extra lives are nothing to be concerned about. Now, if you activate one of those red rings, you'll get eight red coins to tr uh, find, which is, as everybody knows, not exceptionally rare in Mario games. And after collecting eight of the red coins in the designated time limit, you'll be rewarded the recommended power-up for the level. That one would reward a fire flower, the first level would give us an acorn, so on and so forth. Here we are. Now, a little hit, like an easter egg, I guess you could say, that's in these levels, is if you end on the double digits at the end are the same numerical value, you will be rewarded with the Super Nintendo 
uh, level completion. Or not Super Nintendo, the original Mario Brothers level completion. You can get fireworks, an item from Toad, and the original music. Now, all of my Let's Plays are going to have live commentary due to the environment of a scripted Let's Play just isn't the same. It doesn't feel natural. Alright, this is a mushroom house with a pretty simple minigame. Keep your eye on Bowser, hit the other two blocks. So we see Bowser's on the left, so we'll just go ahead and get our mushroom and star. Alright, so now that we've done the first two levels, found the first two power-ups offered to you. Oh, I can't talk tonight. The first two power-ups offered to you, rather. We're going to tackle the first mini-dungeon. Now this is basically our first game castle. Alright, let's continue this, shall we? For this video in particular, I'm having an issue with my audio processing. So if I have to pause and re-enable my live commentary, just bear with me. Alright, now we have the Ice Flower, which is great, because enemies that generally couldn't be killed can be. So you go ahead, hit him, pick him up, throw him at his brother, and now you got a double kill, and you don't have to deal with the Dry Bones again. Alright, so we'll hit the halfway mark. Pretty simple. And something I discovered while trying to record earlier is an extra life up here. It's actually very reminiscent of the older Mario games. See if I can find it here. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to freeze this guy. And I screwed it up. I got a couple extra lives out of it. Here we are at the boss's room. Alright, now this boss is the same as Super Mario Bros. 3 mini bosses. Three stomps on his head, eventually they start flying. Wow, I'm unable to hit him, really. And that's it. That's the end of the first half of Acorn Plains. Alright, now, as far as saving in this game goes, it's just like Super Mario World was. Any key point in the world map, such as mini dungeons, Koopa Castles and Boo Houses, after completion will offer you a save. There is a quick save option, but I believe you're limited to how many times you can do it. So after you beat it, you'll be offered with a save, and you're good to go. I will see you guys next time on part two of Acorn Plains.